You're listening to the Teach Better Talk podcast featuring expert educators eager to share progressive tactics to reach more students. Teach Better Talk is created by teachers and fueled by passion. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 266 of Teach Better Talk podcast. My name is Ray Hewart. I am unfortunately here with Mr. Jeff Gargas, and I really hope that we replace him before episode 300, friends. Oh, do I, I wish. I really, really wish I could argue against that, but I'm pretty sure you're, Not you tonight. have four rights to say that. Yeah. Um, so it's been a good night so far until just a couple minutes ago, we had some technical difficulties, but wait, we're working through it. And yeah, before I mean, we're going to... It was a good episode because of our guest is like such an all star, yes. like insanely good Always. episode. Yeah. Always, we know the the first few minutes are just typically wasting your time, but this is a really good episode. So, uh, like honestly, if you skipped ahead, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even blame you. At this wait, point. wait, have you ever pulled up YouTube on your television before? Uh, well, my kids watch YouTube on the television all the time. Okay, creepy. So I was in my bedroom and I Did logged in. Did you into- watch us? No, um- I- hold on. <laughs> I logged into YouTube because I was going to play music because I like to listen to YouTube music. And the first suggested thing was you and I. And I was like, why would my TV be suggesting I ever watched us on the big screen? That's a horrible did you, idea. Did you watch? Did you watch us on the big screen? I did only to see how big my face was on the television. <laughs> Let me tell you guys. It's a big face. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> That's a big face. Uh-huh. This is a great start to the episode. Can I um can I do something? Can we do something we haven't done in a long time? Yeah, go for it. Can we highlight uh, a review from from Apple Podcast? Do it. We did th- we used to do that like every few episodes. We haven't done it in a long time. I think yeah, maybe we should you we stink. might start doing that more. We should be I doing know, that this, more. Yeah, apparently it's my fault. So yeah. I want to highlight. I want to I'm I found one here that I that I want to throw out. It's it's titled More of This, please. Probably not talking necessarily about this, but <laughs> the show. It's from Ms. Ms. Carrie Graham. Uh, she says, the laughter plus the authentic listening by the host plus bold insights from the guest equals a tired and committed educator's dream. Could that so be? Thank a- you, Ms. Carrie Graham. That was amazing. I lo- Yeah. Like, that's best, the thing. Yes. Best review. That's awesome. I love it. So, we're going to do this more. So, if you're listening and you haven't already, drop us a review over on Apple. Um, podcast if you can and they will we'll shout yours out at and if you're time. and if you're watching on youtube and you just saw jeff go we're gonna do this more he was like pointing aggressively at the camera like we're going to do this more i did not get did i get that close <laughs> <laughs> i mean you just like touched the camera there <laughs> um you're doing your thing that you do on on uh, on instagram where you keep like covering your camera and then you pull it off or I like, just that's did like a that. thing like a that's boomerang like a i know you that's like a, that's like a thing yeah <laughs> all right anyway, all right i want to get into this episode so let's let's talk real quick if you don't know this guy jed derryberry he is like what he said he's an all-star he's going to go through all the things that he does but we didn't talk about some of the accomplishment that he does have so i don't know if you know this right do you know that he was featured in gq magazine as male leader of the world of the year of the world of the, of world. the year he is in my um, world but that doesn't surprise me he's amazing <laughs> so he's, no gq magazine listen him as male leader of the year um, he's, he's met president Obama cause he was, uh, uh, the South Carolina honoree of the presidential award for excellence in math and science teaching. No big deal. He's a, f- he's a finalist for South Carolina teacher of the year. Um, he's an author once over with another one on the way. He does a billion other things that he talks about and share with us. This guy's just, uh, he's just a good guy too. He's a lot of fun. We've been connected. We've both been connected to him for a long time. Um, and we were both just super excited to have him on the podcast and he did not disappoint uh, just a rock star. So much value from from the very start of this episode all the way through. This is a guy that you definitely want to go connect with um, and just follow and learn and grow with. So, Ray, anything to add? I am just a huge fan. I'm so glad we tricked him on the podcast. I can't wait to like be his new best friend. <laughs> well, let's get into episode 266 with Jed Derryberry. Hey, guys, we'll get right back to the episode, but I want to give a humongous shout out to our Teach Better Podcast Network. They have been working so hard to not only share educational resources via their podcast, but also with daily tweets over on Twitter. Go follow everyone in the Teach Better Podcast Network by connecting with at Joshua double underscore stamper and checking out the TB Podcast Network list 
or you can head over to teachbetter.com slash podcasts and click on the link right there to get access to each and every person who is sharing their voice to support educators. All right, let's get back to the episode. All right, we are here and we are chatting with Jed Derryberry. And Jed, it's so awesome to have you on the podcast. Um, we've been connected for, I don't even know how long, a while. Yeah. Um, and I don't know why it's taken so long to get you here, but it doesn't matter because you're here now. So we're excited to dive in everything you've got going on and learn more about you. But before we jump too far into things, man, how are you feeling right now? I'm, I'm feeling great. It's, I'll tell you, it's been a, a really great day. I am evaluating student teachers for a higher ed institution here in Spartanburg. And I spent the day with seven of those uh, student teachers hearing their capstone presentations all about their um, semester of student teaching, going over their um, growth targets and things like that. It's been it's been a great day. Um, the future teachers that are coming into the field from from this institution are going to be great for next year. I'm excited to see um, new teachers and what all they bring to the profession. Well, Jed, I'm so glad you're here. I just want on record, you and Jeff have been connected for a long time. I have been following you on social media, I feel like forever. And it took me bumping into you at a conference yep. for me to be like, will you pretty please come please on our podcast? <laughs> you know, I've been wanting to come on here uh, for the longest time. I'll tell you something that I've been working on is putting myself out there in a self-promoting kind of way. I, I've, I've been hesitant to do that. But um, when you write a book, you kind of have to do that just a little bit. So it just worked out. Um, when you, when you said, please come on the podcast, I was like, okay, you twist my arm. I'll do it. I'll do it. Um, uh, but I will tell you, I feel like I, I feel like I know y'all. Um, I'm so excited to be here with y'all. It feels like a conversation with friends more than, you know, you know, an interview of, of, of sorts. But, um, it, it tickled me that day at the conference that you were excited to meet me because I was just equally excited to meet you. Yeah, I so appreciate that. Well, and yeah. I'm, it should feel like a conversation. We're just going to hang out and talk shop and catch up like family. Yeah. But for our listeners who maybe haven't been following you or don't know everything about the story and the work that you continue to do, would you mind kind of going through like your bio, kind of answering that age old question of like, hey, Jed, what do you do? So it's a it's a million dollar question when people ask me what I do, because my, the first thing I, I tell them, I'm, I'm an educator. And instantly they say, oh, what grade? And I say, well, college grade. Um, because that's what I'm in right now. I'm working primarily in higher ed. I taught six courses this semester, um, three sections of um, communications, the diverse classroom, two sections of children's lit and one fine arts in the elementary curriculum. And I absolutely love the work that I do in higher ed. I taught first and second grade for about 13 years before I moved into higher ed and professional development consulting. Um, but most of my work the last year, year and a half has been in, um, higher ed, especially throughout the pandemic. Cause you know, the consulting work, the travel and that kind of thing kind of died off very quickly. Um, but things are picking back up. I do a lot of consulting with districts. Um, especially now that the playful classroom is out, people want to talk about the book. We do book clubs. We do book, uh, book studies. I do full day workshops on the book and things like that. Also work with, um, teacher heart out, uh, teacher. Uh, conference series. Um, and, you know, I just I do a lot of different things in education. I also I do an artisan residence program um, with schools here in South Carolina. I'd love to get that out and anywhere who wants me to come and um, also do some coaching, some creativity coaching and things like that. So I wear a lot of hats in education. So I love. Yeah, lots of hats, man. <laughs> lots of stuff going on. Yeah. I want to I want to zero in on the book. Uh, the Playful Classroom. Can you kind of take us through where that book came from? Like what sparked ideas? How long did you did you work on it? Who would you work on it with? Who would you put it out with? And then who's it for? Who should go pick it up? So uh, lots of questions there. The co-author of the book is <laughs> Dr. <laughs> no, it's good. I like answering them. The, the co-author of the book is Dr. Julie Jones. She is a full-time professor at Converse College in Spartanburg. And she and I met through my adjunct work. She was a full-time professor at the college, and I was adjuncting at the time. And one of our students that had both of our classes said, hey, y'all need to meet because y'all are the same teacher. And I didn't know her because <laughs> as an adjunct, you don't really get to know the, the faculty because you're, you're just in and out. and You're just kind of, you know, almost like a substitute teacher in a way. And um, I just walked into her office and there she sat making her grocery list. And I made fun of her for the way she was making her grocery list. And she... She um, made fun of me for um, busting up in her office, uh, criticizing her list. And we became instantly uh, great friends. And we started working on the book not long after that. 
Um, we didn't know it was going to be called the Playful Classroom at the time, but it, it took us about four, four and a half years um, of writing and, and revisioning. And we even, we even hired a, a little life coach along the way, a writing coach, if you will, to uh, keep us on track and somebody we could text our daily word count to and things like that. We wrote it originally. We thought we were writing it for our college students. But as we got more into the work, we said, you know, this book is really for anybody who does any kind of education. The title is The Playful Classroom, The Power of Play for All Ages. Um, we had hoped that we could help um, teachers in grades three and up understand that play was not just an early childhood thing, that the neuroscience out there, the research supported play in learning and how it helped um, the dendrites to grow and to fire um, and just to deepen uh, uh, students' understanding. And the social emotional aspect of play was just something that could not be ignored. And you know what? Coming out of this pandemic, we're going to need all of the playful learning that we can get. No more sit and get. We've been sitting and getting far too long. Um, And this last year, we sat even more than we were used to. So Um, hopefully the world is going to bring some more play into our classroom soon. Um, who's, who's the audience for, as we said, now it's for any educator, um, but not just the classroom teacher. It's for the parent who may be teaching at home. It's for the coach, uh, who is volunteering with the special Olympics. It is for the 4-H club sponsor. It is for a camp counselor or camp director. It's for anybody who is in any kind of education role. Because the playful classroom can be in any space where learning happens. I love it. And you know, Jim, when you went when, when you signed up to record with us, you marked this, but I didn't I didn't ask you before we hit record. So I'm just gonna ask you as a record now. Are we are we giving away a copy of the book today? Oh yeah, we are. Yeah. I would love to give All away right, a copy. So if you're listening and that sounds like something you want to take a take a read of a little bit later in the episode, we're gonna figure out a way to give a give away a copy. Uh, Jed, I want to dive into one other thing. You didn't mention this in all the things that you do, right. but about a week ago, I think it was about a week ago, maybe five, six days ago, okay. you dropped episode number one of Jed TV. I did. Yes, I what, did. What's Jed TV? So I, I appreciate you asking that because, you know <laughs> so what? Don't I, worry. This is what I, I watched. Loved, I love that you watched. I love uh, you stalking my social media. Hey, I like Maybe. You maybe know, a little bit. It's funny that you asked that because I really, I, in my brain, I'm not really doing that yet. So, <laughs> Episode one, I, I threw it out there. I'll tell you, it's something that I have wanted to do for a long time. I thought about doing a podcast, but the, I'll be honest with you. I just feel like video is a little bit better because I'm very animated. Um, even though your listeners aren't watching me right now, I'm talking and using my hands and I'm in my, my home office. That's really fun place to be. And I, I've wanted to do this for a long time. And my followers uh, that I've been connected with have said, Jed, we love when you go live and do videos. and and I said, you know what, let's do this. And I had the idea of Jed TV that it's Jed talking about education. Um, and so it's little J, big ED. And the focus of each show is to equip, encourage, and empower um, educators. Uh, equip them with a new tool, a new idea, new way of thinking that they literally could drop into their classroom the next day after watching the episode. Um, encourage them. There's going to be lots of funny stories. Uh, from my own teaching, uh, stories from other people's teachings. I've got lots of great um, student artwork that, let's just say, it turned out a little bit different than they had hoped, or maybe there was a fun <laughs> misspelling of a word that led to another meaning. <laughs> got lots of fun stuff that I'm going to share there. It's going to leave you laughing. Sometimes it'll be a, a good a good cry we may have because our, our profession is full of emotions. Um, And then the empowerment part, I'm going to always close every episode with a question for you to think about that will empower your teaching and maybe even your your personal life. Who knows? We'll see what happens with Jed TV. Listen, my friend, I know you you said you don't think that you're doing that now, but I hope you realize now you are. I know. Now I am. I'm pretty sure you just committed to it. (laughs) Well, I'll tell you, I ask ask everybody at the end of the episode, I said, so tell me, you know, how often do you think that I should do this? And and almost every response I got said, "Oh, we need one of these every week." And so I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best to to crank one out every week. There, I made a commitment that each video is not going to be more than ten minutes long because I don't want it to be um, well anything more than ten minutes is 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 going to be a, a mini series production in my home office here. So I got <laughs> I got to limit it to at least ten minutes. But um, 
I just think that people want things like that, but they want it kind of quick, you know, and I don't want to take up a lot of their time. Um, But I got some good feedback. And just yesterday, my lapel mic that connects to my phone showed up. And so now my sound quality is about to go up after that first episode. But it just makes sense then. I put it out there, Jeff, because I'll tell you for the last year, I've wanted to do this and I was like, oh, my sound's not right. Oh, my graphics aren't right. You know, and I kept finding a reason not to do it. And I was like, you know, if I'm waiting on perfection, it's never going to happen. So I'm going to put episode one out there. And then, you know, if I make a hundred episodes of it, then the hundredth episode is going to be way better than one. And people get to see my growth over time. And that's what we celebrate with our students. We want growth over time. So here we go. Boom. There's a, there's a lesson right there. Yeah. Right? If you're going to wait for protect, for perfection, it's never going to happen. Never gonna number happen. 100 will you be know, better than one. Yeah, Jeff, we're never waiting for perfection from you. We'll just take whatever you got. Okay? <laughs> that's a, that's you know a very good decision. You know, I think about, I think about y'all, you know, when y'all started your podcast. How and, bad it was? Yeah, no, we know. it wasn't bad. It wasn't <laughs> We know bad, where you're but, going, Jeff. But when I just think about the Teach Better, you know, the whole movement that you guys have started, it, you know, it, it had to start somewhere, you know, and it wasn't perfect from the get-go. You, y'all have learned since the beginning, right? Yeah, I think about this podcast, right? I mean, think about episode one compared to this is episode 266. No way. Yeah. Like, That's insane. I hope, I, I haven't went back and listened, but I hope if I went back and listened to number one right now that I would notice a good difference. I'm sure you would. I'm sure you would. <laughs> Who knows? All right, Jed. Let's 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 get into some story time here. One of my favorite questions to ask is is, is having our guests share a story about a time they've had a failure in their life and how they overcome that. So, can you take us on a journey with you? Share a story with with us that a time you've had a, a failure and how you had to overcome that. Kind of take us there with you. What did what happened? How did you overcome that? And then, what did you take away from that experience? You know, I don't know if I was, I've been thinking a lot about this because there's been lots of things where I messed up or things didn't turn out like I wanted them to. Um, and I, I know it's it's hard to define what I'm about to say maybe is a failure. But um, as you, you may have read in my bio, I was a finalist for the South Carolina Teacher of the Year um, in 2015. And I made it to the top five. And the night that the um, the winner was announced, they didn't call my name. I know, I know. You're shocked, right? I, I was shocked. They didn't call my name. I'm shocked. And, and the next the next morning, I woke up and, you know, there was a lot of people that said, oh, Jed, we're, we're just thinking, we believe you're going to win it. You believe you're going to win it. You know, and, and, and you you get to that moment and you think that you're, you might actually have a shot. And you did. I had a one out of five shot, right? But the next morning when I woke up and, and my name wasn't the one that was on the, the state newspaper and I felt a huge disappointment that I had let my district down or I had let my students down. And y'all, it was hard the next day. And it was hard. Um, so it, they announced it on a Wednesday night. That Thursday we had off because we they paraded us around as the finalists, you know, with the winner and she made speeches and we got to meet with um, the elected officials and things like that at our state house. And it was a great day to represent education. But that Friday, when I went back to school, I was, I'll be honest with y'all, I did not want to go back to school because I didn't want to tell all the students, you know, every time I turned around, because the whole school knew I was going, the whole district knew, right? And so I was just so anxious about going back and having to tell the kids because it, to kids, they don't understand the whole finalist thing. You either won or you didn't, you know? <laughs> and so I knew I was yeah. going to have to tell all the students that I either won or lost or whatever. But I'm going to tell you, when I got to school that next morning, the principal called me to the office and she was going to do a little interview over the intercom, asking me questions about the event and talking all about it. And y'all, while I was pretending to do this interview, the entire school um, snuck out of their classrooms and lined the hallways. And then when I walked out of the office, they paraded me down the hall and cheered for me and clapped for me. Mm. And it was at that moment that I realized, you know, I didn't lose. That wasn't a failure, even though at the time I felt like it was a failure uh, because I didn't win. I had to have this little talk with myself that, you know, I got I got to go back to that school for a whole nother year. Um, If had I won, um, I would have had to take the next year off. And that was that what that is what turned out to be my final year in elementary before I went to higher ed. And y'all, I met I had the best class that last year. And there's this sweet little girl. Um, who was in my class, who was, I wish I could tell you her name and all of her story, but she was one of the most amazing students that I ever had. 
um, because she had overcome so much. And I remember every day that year, she taught me something new. She taught me something new, how to persevere, how to not give up. Um, and I think had I not had I not lost the teacher of the year, I would have never met her. And right here in this home mm-hmm. office, right here in this home office, um, I have this little golden plastic crown that she wore every day that year because she played um, Elsa in our little um, class play that we did. So she wanted to wear that crown every day. And I wanted her to have it when she left the classroom, but she moved very suddenly near the end of the year and she didn't take it with her. So I keep it. And I have, I've had, that's been six years now. Um, and it's hanging on a rainbow Christmas tree in my home office. And I think about her every day and I think about how to persevere, how to not give up, how to keep pressing on no matter what comes my way. Um, because if she can do it, so can I. Oh, I love so, everything yeah. about I, I wish y'all could see the the little crown. Before, I know. I feel like we, we all need to before share we, a we before we social. yeah before we end our our call. Maybe we'll turn the video on and y'all can see it, and then I'll post a picture to social media too. Yeah, I love that absolutely because everyone after hearing that story is going to want to to want to see it. it. It's so funny. The crown is is it's hot glued and taped together because we couldn't get it to fit her head, um, so I had to break it. And then hot glue it. To, you're, just wait till you see it. You're going to think this, this is hysterical. <laughs> oh, my I would, gosh. I would not take anything for this crown. I love it immensely. But there's so many things to take away from that failure story. Because, first of all, that is my one of my favorite stories of a quote-unquote failure. Because, right or wrong, I am somebody who does feel like those awards are meaningful. I, and I've even wrote about it in my book before and spoke about it, that, like, I don't like that I like awards, but the yeah. reality is, is I do like want that. And I, yeah. as you were telling that story, I could feel it like, oh, that feeling of not getting your name called. Like, oh, that's the worst. I, I'll tell you, I never will forget it because my whole family was there and I was sitting, I was holding my mom's hand. And the crazy thing about it is the lady who won, her name is Jennifer, right? And so uh, when they said Jennifer, it sounded like they were about to say Jed. And my mom squeezed my hand and then she realized that they didn't. And my mom let go. And we were like, oh, my uh, you know, it was this instant like, ah, uh, because they waited. You know, the interview process was months It from Jen- I think I found out mm-hmm. into February. And it was um, about this time. Um, we just had our South Carolina uh, Teacher of the Year for this year gala. Uh, this past week. So it was about this time of year. But, you know, here's the thing. I, the, the reason that a lot of people think, oh, well, you want it for the notoriety or whatnot. In South Carolina, you become a spokesperson for all the mm. teachers in the state and you travel around. It's very much like being Miss America. You travel around with your quote unquote crown and sash and you get to speak to the issues and people listen to you. You have a platform and a voice. And and that was what I was wanting to have and to experience because I wanted to advocate for the students at my school. Uh, I, I taught my whole career in a schools of where poverty was very um, prevalent. Um, I fought for, I fought for, I wanted to fight for students who were victims of domestic violence as I had been myself growing up. I wanted to fight for students who were LGBTQ in a very conservative state that doesn't have a lot of rights. And I wanted to be that spokesperson for them. And when I didn't get that, I thought, wow, there went my opportunity. But little did I know is that the opportunity to be a voice, it, it you don't have to have that stage and platform of the state teacher of the year. South Carolina is small enough. If you start speaking, people listen. Um, yeah. And so I, I found other ways to get my voice out. And, and, and honestly, having a book um, was one of them. I've got another book coming out this summer called The Courageous Classroom, and it's about fear and trauma and the way that it affects learning and how teachers need to have more trauma informed training so that they can help um, students like me who are, who are in the classroom. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I love that you turned that, that story of failure into such a big celebration with so many meaningful moments. You know, there's so many people out there that say, Oh, things happen for a reason. And, and whether you think things happen for a reason or not, the value that you can take away by finding meaning in everything in life is so wonderful. And I, I love that focus for you. Um, and, and specifically in that story, I know you just always have that approach of trying to 
see the silver lining and take something away from every experience. You know, when it comes to all the things you're involved in, I mean, geez, you just talked about a new book coming out that everybody I'm hoping is already like waiting to, to find out the full details on that. And, and obviously all these other goals you have, what's really keeping you excited about education right now and, you know, everything that you're involved in? Gosh, well, I'll tell you something I am super excited about right now, and it's it's kind of on a local-ish level in South Carolina, but I ha- work um, pretty closely with a group called the Arts and Basic Curriculum Project, the ABC Project. It is a group here in South Carolina that um, helps schools to focus on infusing the arts in all areas of the curriculum, um, and not just, uh, you know, cutting and paste in a little butterfly at the end of the butterfly unit, but literally how to um, infuse the arts throughout the learning process, not just at the end of the experience. And this summer, I'm leading a workshop with their director, Kim Wilson, um, to train creativity coaches. You know how schools have literacy Mm -hmm. coaches and math coaches? The ABC Project is working with 30 schools from around the state to put in place creativity coaches to help teachers learn how to um, infuse creativity. And don't hear me say the arts when I say that, because the arts are creative, but creativity is a way of thinking. It's it's taking mm. something old and traditional and morphing it into something new and meaningful. And so we're, I'm just super excited about that. Absolutely. Why, why I'm excited about it is because I'm hopeful that the work that I do with them I can put on my social media platforms and who knows, maybe some other schools that have grant money sitting around or maybe they are in a progressive district that says, hey, we want some creativity coaches in our school. Jed, come and, and train our coaches. Um, I, I am obsessed with uh, the thought of creativity um, more and more in our classrooms. I read this book a while back called the, um, it's by Tanner Christensen. Um, gosh, I, I have read it a thousand times and I just lost my blank. My mind, I just lost my mind right there. Um, the Creativity Challenge. Hello, The Creativity Challenge by Tanner Christensen. And it's just a book full of ideas to infuse creativity into your daily life. And man, I, I started doing those things and it just changed who I was. I connected with him on Twitter. He started sending me books to give away to teachers. And then uh, that just led me down this whole path of reading books about creativity um, and, and putting more creative thinking into the learning process. Um, I just, uh, last semester I taught a creativity and play course, uh, for the university that I work for. So, um, I, I, that creativity and its relevance in our learning right now excites me. Absolutely. No. And that is so exciting. That program sounds outstanding. I can't wait for, for us to be able to, to see more specifics on that. So we'll have to keep an eye on your social media. Yep. You know, when it comes to a piece of advice, question five always has to do with one piece of advice that you kind of want to leave as your piece of advice of the episode, right? For all of our listeners, it's one piece of advice that they really should consider. So I get a lot of my wisdom from life from children's books. I, I love children's literature. You heard me say at the beginning of the show that I teach a class on it. And my my all-time favorite children's author is Peter Reynolds, author of The Dot. Um, and so many other books, but most people know him for the dot, I think. And, um, he also illustrated the cover of our book, which was really cool. Um, but in the book, the dot, um, Vashti's teacher, the art teacher looks at Vashti and said, Vashti, just make a mark and see where it takes you. And that is the biggest advice I could give to anybody because all big things started with one tiny mark. I don't care what it is. Um, I listened to, Barack Obama's um, book, A Promised Land. I listened to Michelle Obama's book, Becoming, which was amazing to listen to those books because they read to you. So I feel like I'm their BFFs because they run around in the car with me for 30 hours each book, you know, (laughs) Um, and listening to their stories. They started with a dot. Both of them were little dots out there in the world. And they kept making more dots and more dots and more dots. And then all of a sudden they were the first family of the United States. And their dot was huge, but it started with little tiny dots. And so when I think about, you know, the words of Peter Reynolds there via the teacher, the art teacher, you know, make a mark and see where it takes you. That is some good wisdom. 
Um, and it kind of goes back to Jed TV. You know, if you're waiting on perfection, it'll never happen. So just make that mark and then build off of that and see what happens. Oh, I love that piece of advice. Just make a mark and build off it. That's awesome. Um, I want to keep this going. I want to get into the six questions that I'm going to throw at you super fast. But before we do that, let's give everyone a chance to win a copy of your book. Yeah. Uh, Jed, the way we typically do this is trying to think of something that they can tweet out to us or share out to us. Um, and then we'll, we'll pick some randomly. So where's your go-to? Is it Twitter? Is it Instagram? Um, I, let's, let's do Instagram. Twitter's my go-to, okay. but I'm really like- trying to connect with more people on Instagram. So let's go Instagram. I like the Instagram. So yeah. going to Instagram, you're going to share in your own story. Make sure you tag at teach better team and then tag it's Mr. At Mr. Dairyberry. Is it? Is yeah. that what it is? Mr. Dairyberry. Yeah. All right. Tag that. And I just liked it in your story and you can do it in one, you can do it as video, you can do text, whatever. Just share how you're going to uh, use play in, in, in your, in your instruction. Does that work? Yeah, that works good. And I'll just good. pick the best Simple. one. I'll pick my favorite. We'll pick a favorite. We'll pick a favorite and we'll send one. Yep. Okay. That sounds Make good. it easy. I'm excited. About awesome. It. Really appreciate you doing that, brother. That's awesome. Uh, let's do this. The next six questions I'm going to throw at you. Your goal is to answer each one in 15 seconds or less. You ready? Okay, I got it. All right, what is one ed tech tool you cannot live without? I'm obsessed with Goose Chase, the online scavenger hunt app. I build nice. all kinds of scavenger hunts um, for all kinds of reasons. I love to do a professional development with a Goose Chase. I talk class with a Goose Chase. It's the most fun because each mission can be creativity. It can be creative and fun. Hands on, energetic. There we go. Uh, give us a book you're reading right now. Uh, so it says no more than three, and I'm in the middle of three right now. Um, one is <laughs> one is Courageous Creativity by Sarah Czar, Advice and Encouragement for the Creative Life. I am in the middle of book three of the All Souls, All Souls trilogy, um, The Book of Life um, by Deborah Hartness. Um, if you don't, The Discovery of Witches, that's the first one. Some of you may have heard that one. And then just uh, I just started this one. It's called how not to ask a boy to the prom. It's a little young adult. Um, gosh, I love it. I'm obsessed with it. Really. That's probably what I'm going to finish uh, next because I- I'm flying through it. Love it. Who do we need to follow on Twitter or Instagram today? Okay. Uh, this was super hard, but I picked three. Um, one, <laughs> Dr. Jamela Coase. She's at Jamela. It's J E M E L L E H C O E S. Um, at he rhymes with me. Amazing, amazing, amazing educator. Um, he raps all kinds of things. You'll just be obsessed with him. And the third one is at Jarrett underscore a learner, um, learner like L E R N E R. Um, who's an author illustrator and I'm obsessed with his doodles and he's inspired me to be an artist in my own right. Um, with my um, own little doodles. I'm obsessed with him. What's a good YouTube channel, website or podcast for educators to check out? Well, other than the teach better podcast, of course, um, I love the unmistakable creative podcast with Srini Rao. Listen to it. Give us a daily, weekly, or monthly routine every teacher should get into. Bullet journaling. I'm obsessed. If you don't have a bullet journal, get you one. I use the lectern 1917. Um, I am on journal number seven now. I'm about to finish it up and I will start, um, journal eight, um, June the 1st. And what is the best piece of advice you've ever received? Well, other than make your mark and see where it takes you from Peter Reynolds, I would probably have to say I love the advice of my great grandmother, Maudie. She says, you can say anything if you put a little honey on your lips. And (laughs) that is just some wise, wise words that you can you can you can tell anybody just about anything if you say it the right way um, with respect. And like she says, a little honey on your lips. (laughs) Oh, I, I think it. that's yeah. my favorite piece yeah. of advice. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a good yeah. one. I'll, I'll tell you all funny. I, I hope I got time to tell you this. Please don't edit this out because it's great. No, no, no. Good. Used, tell it. I used to work with an educator and she was, she didn't need, she didn't have honey on her lips. She was kind of mean to everybody, kids and adults alike. And one day I had to have a, a, a closed door meeting with her and she wasn't very nice. And so the next day, a, a, a little bottle of that teddy bear honey just mysteriously appeared in her um, box with a little note <laughs> on it. <laughs> I think about that every time I tell that story about putting honey on your lips. Because you never know. If you're mean to me, I'm going to mail you a little box of honey, a little jar of honey. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to. You know what? I, I like I like that. Kill them with kindness and a little bit of, little bit a of little honey. Bit of honey. Way. Just just a little good. bit of honey. That's right. <laughs> I love it. 
I, you know, Jed, I want to make sure everybody can connect with you. Yeah. And so I, I will you share like, I mean, all the things like Instagram, Twitter, website, yeah. all the things, because so, there's no way someone's supposed to this episode and not become a huge fan. So the thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. The The cool thing about having a last name like Dairyberry is it just it's very usable and it's very easy to find me. If you just type Jed Dairyberry into Google, all the things are going to come up. Um, there's a couple of haters out there who blogged about me before. So you can just ignore all those. But um, Twitter and Instagram is at Mr. Dairyberry. And my website is MrDairyberry.com. And if you go to Amazon, I have a Amazon author page. That would, guess what? It just is Mr. Dairyberry. You type it in and there mm-hmm. I will be. And you will see my pretty mug on your screen and you can get in touch with me. If you need to email me and uh, talk about maybe some partnerships or some collaboration at your school, Mr. Dairyberry at gmail.com. I love it. Make it easy for us. You yep. know, you can find all the links, all the resources and everything we mentioned in this episode over at teachbetter.com, as well as the really important links for connect with Jed and keeping the conversation going. So head over to teachbetter.com for all that. Be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming episodes. And if you can give us a rating and review, we'd really appreciate that as well. Let's keep taking this one step further. Think of just three of your colleagues who need to hear these amazing stories and connect with these amazing educators and just share this podcast with them. Jed, man, this was this was awesome. Uh, you know, I had I'm not gonna lie, I had a high bar for you, and you absolutely exceeded it. This is a great episode. I'm super excited for people to to grab the value from this and to then hopefully connect with you and continue to learn and grow with you. Really, really appreciate you taking some time to hang out with us tonight, man. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate it. It was good to be here and chat with you guys. Thanks. Until next time, let's get out there and let's teach better. Mm-hmm.